my intake in this in the for this uh, round table discussion is on the politics of power with an inclusion and exclusion discourses of ICT for development. Um, so we all already discussed and we all know that the inherent inequality and the skewed power relationship between the North and the South has been, you know, extensively researched and critiqued in the field of development. Uh, similarly, what I'm trying to do in this paper is that the, I rather argue that the role of ICT for development, especially in the South, entangled within in conflicting interests and assumptions of the poor uh, or the marginalized as a passive uh, subject of development. Um, this particular feminist critique on uh, on ICT 4D is based on the 2013 ICT 4D International Conference, collaboratively hosted by the University of Western Cape, which is my campus, and the University of UCT, um, University of Cape Town. Um, so the Young Women Govern South African team was invited to be part of this uh, different seminars. And so my critical reflection uh, on the seminars will be particular with a particular reference to three open sessions. Uh, the first one, I, I would like to name them all because it's very necessary for me to make the connection. Uh, the first one was ICT and the social system in a bracket, gender, class, race, and generation. And the second one was infusing gender and ICT 4D. And uh, the last one where, that I attended was um, punk ICT 4D. And generally, these discussions in, in these three sessions critical, critically analyze the essential problem of ICT 4D globally, but essentially uh, a special attention was given to the exclusionary effect of policy making and programming practices of different um, sectors of ICT 4D. And for the purpose of this panel, I would like to mention the three important uh, critics that I would like to explore more. Uh, the first one was oftentimes, particularly in Africa, experts are sent with ready-made tools and strategies that ignore social differences and local contextual realities to oversee implementation in, of a certain development program. So the problem uh, with this kind of approach, or rather interventionalist approach, as many try to indicate, is that it does not acknowledge difference in social and political experience of individuals and also the diversity of contexts. And secondly, it was argued that uh, critical reviews of innovative ICT projects and all in so ICT solutions are usually measured against statistical indicators. And usually, with this, are not, this method are not well suited in capturing the complex, dynamic interaction and relation with the, on the ground level. Um, as a result, uh, the voice of the intended the beneficiaries is not adequately included in in terms of uh, in, in included in conception design implementation and evaluation of the solution that has come after that. For instance, now uh, case in point in this conference, some of the new ICT technological innovations were presented uh, at the ICT 4D showcase. And most of these applications were regarded as pro-poor, for they are developed to enhance the poor's life and ultimately to elevate them um, from poverty. Uh, but however, we find out as we were uh, exploring most of the innovations, we find out that um, some of the, the solutions actually requires accessing high-tech mobile or ICT resources. And now, uh, here what I want to uh, give to the panel is that although the goal of ICT 4D is to eliminate inequalities, because of the type of research done, methodologically speaking, and tools implemented without in-depth investigation of local realities and participation, most importantly, participation of the intended beneficiaries, then the program itself ran a risk of contributing to contribution to persistence 
of inequality. And the third point that I would like to talk about is um, the, one of the highly debated argument that the institution of ICT 4D itself as a research or other practices, and including the conferences, it, it reproduces social divisions. And by first, by othering early career scholars and scholars from the global south, um, this was actually mentioned mainly in the pen KCD session, and there most of us were young scholars who have vested interest in using ICT4D to create new or alternative knowledge production. However, many agreed that when it comes to presenting their work, they are still seen as emerging scholars, and there there was no. Um, opportunity for their work to be recognized. So here uh, I think the problem is now the space appears to be very open with unlimited opportunities of knowledge production. But in reality, as opportunities are given to those experts who happen to be working in the institution for a very long time, this point is to dangerously for me as an African the, to the question of autonomy, especially for the third world. Because the whole idea here is the underlying assumption is that innovation happens or originates elsewhere, not in Africa, for example. So in that sense, homegrown African experts in particular seem to have not, uh, not to have the opportunity and the autonomy to decide and represent their, their findings or their innovative solutions. Secondly, uh, this social division, uh, the exclusion happens, uh, although, you see, although there is, within the conference now, although there is a symbolic gesture for, in, for invitation of research and discussions that are concerned with the ongoing impacts on IC, of ICT on gender, race, ethnicity, class, and other intersecting identities, but in reality, it marginalized them because, now my personal uh, observation was, these open sessions were located in a very small lecture room as opposed to bigger lecture room uh, hall where you have innovative ICT uh, solution being presented to the wider audience. So in the end, we end up uh, with a very small group who have this magnitude kind of interest but who can't have publicity or public attention. Um, to end my, my sort of talk, <laughs> uh, I would like to say like uh, normalized and dominant assumptions of knowledge production, which tends to reproduce stereotypical narratives of the, the developed and undeveloped on the one side, and the expert and emerging scholars on the other side actually dangerously allow the complex political factors influencing poverty and inequality to be hidden, or at least to get to go largely unquestioned. And thank you for listening.